Yeah, so next up, uh, Matei is going to present uh, you his progress and uh, his photogrammetry he did last week. Hello, hello. A uh, spellcreative uh, stream and everyone. I'm Retro working on Pixel Art Academy. As a reminder, last time uh, I showed you I'm working on the art studio scene of my point and click adventure, uh, which is right now a text adventure. Uh, so here's the uh, uh, here in the art studio we have this uh, still life uh, setup, still live stand, and so I'm coding support for that. It's still a prototype. Um, and uh, last time we just had geometric primi primitives mm -hmm. and now I'm trying to get some fruit into the picture. Um, so the first thing I did was look Google for photorealistic banana model on the internet. Um, and I found it, where is it here? It's pretty cool. Um, however, from sites like Sitch Trader, I, if I bought this, uh, I looked at their policies. And you can put it, for example, in games, but it's not allowed to distribute the source files or you have to like confiscate them very much. The problem is my game is open source, so I actually do have to upload things for the free. So, um, so yeah, this wasn't immediately possible. And so uh, I started, well, I could just do my own fruit. It's kind of a beginner 3D modeling thing. However, I was really impressed by uh, the quality of this and it's done with photogrammetry, which is instead of 3D modeling by hand, you take photos of something and use uh, computers to generate uh, models. And so uh, some of you have seen me uh, here <laughs> conducing a photo shoot of a banana. Uh, for those who didn't see, so this was here. Um, and I have used software called to, 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 to Regard 3D to work on this. Here's my banana model. So the way this works is uh, first you input, well, first of all, you take 100 photos of a banana from all around, uh, which you can see here, and they just go slowly. You do small increments because, you know, from all of the angles, for any point of, of the object, it basically needs to be seen at least from three photos to end up in the mesh. So that's why I take so many photos. Um, next step is it does matches between the photos. That's why also you need a lot. If I click here, show matches, um, you can see here and I can show single key points as well. Um, yeah, so basically it figures out, you know, all of these kind of small little contrast in the photo defines as key points, and then it matches all 100 photos pairwise uh, to figure out which ones it can figure out uh, are the same features. Then the next step is called, when you have these matches, it's called triangulation, where it figures out from these key points and how they're different, how, what their kind of parallax is. It figures out the locations of the cameras. Uh, here are the key points, you can kind of barely see them, but, um, and then here are these green points. Oh yeah, I can do this. There you go, now you can see them. Here are the key points, uh, the, the, the matched ones, and then it calculated how I was taking. You can see that I was kind of taking like a 45 angle around the banana, and then in between those uh, big light boxes, I went also up and down. So I have this sort of three times up and down and all around. Uh, so this is great, now it, ha now it knows where all the cameras are, but the, uh, the model here is still very sparse. So the next thing the software does is called the intensification. It's gonna take a little bit to load because, so it, it's a huge point cloud of all of the other points that it can kind of compute in between these sparse uh, key points. Oh shit, I opened up the wrong one. That's why it's loading so long. Um, you can, yeah, there's this, this one is, this one actually took like an hour and 40 minutes to compute because it's operating on the full 3K photos that I took. Um, yeah, that's a huge punch cloud. I might just kill it. Um, and it, since it took so long to compute, then I tried, okay, can I get away with lower res? Uh, photos using during the densification, and yes, I can. So this one should load a little bit faster. 
Um, yeah, so here is now the densified banana model. It has this weird stuff like this white ridges because of how, I don't know, like some certain angles, it tries to match the top of a banana and it thinks, okay, these white points are matched. Uh, but yeah, it's just a point cloud at this point. So the last, the final step is to create a mesh across all of this. And so it basically looks at which points are connected and creates a triangle mesh, which you can finally see here. Here is uh, the 3D banana scene. Uh, there are some problems you can see here. For example, there's like parts that are underneath um, so I did also then take yet another hundred photos of a banana <laughs> flipped, flipped upside down. So here's the other side of the banana. So technically what I would do at this point is, so yeah, here you can see the, you know, the mesh model. Uh, what I would do now at this point is I would export both of this into Blender cut them in half, See, technically it's perfectly the same 3D model, so I could align them, then make a slice through the both halves and connect them together. Uh, however, at this point, I, uh, as I was doing all of this, I also emailed Aaron if perhaps he would be willing to let me put his banana into my open source repository. <laughs> and during the time, he actually replied and said, yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and not, not just that, he uh, actually made a lot of fruit, so I just bought the whole pack of different <laughs> fruits for uh, not that much money. And so now I actually have all of this. So, uh, yeah, at this point, I did not proceed with my own photogrammetry, but use his. <laughs> so here is, uh, in Blender, the banana from, from him. Um, pa -pa -pa -pa. So, yeah, here is, uh, well, yeah, here you can see the, so he provided, actually, I think I have it opened up here. So, yeah, he, uh, so here are the, the textures that he created. So this would be kind of my result. Um, he actually has 8K photos, which like hundreds of megabytes, so I pretty much scaled it down to 512 and JPEG them. So now in the end, when I think about it, this is, it would not be the source model like at all. The only thing that I'm actually using from him is the geometry, um, which is like the, uh, yeah, the FBX file. So that one would give me kind of problems uh, if I didn't ask him uh, about it. Mm. So yeah, and then a normal map uh, and a roughness map to know which things are more specular. So yeah, this is in Blender. Um, here I also have an apple that I've done. Um, the next step I also have to do in Blender is put in a collision model because my editor is like physics based. So here I have a collision shape which is, in this case, a convex hull. And it's a little bit smaller because on top of a convex hull, I had a collision margin, which kind of smooths it out. Uh, so you get kind of for, uh, for free, basically, you get a smoothed object with uh, quite much less uh, geometry. I think this has like, I don't know, 100 vertices or something like that. Um, yeah, and so then this is uh, finally imported into my game. So we can look at stand. This is the scene from last time, and now we have the banana. Oh, sorry, the apple. <laughs> I wish. So the reason why we don't have the, uh, the banana yet is because it's a con concave shape. And by the time of uh, SGDC, I've only implemented putting in the uh, concave shape. And so yeah, this is kind of, here it is. Nice little. <laughs> All right, any questions? Which one of the fruits is your favorite? Mm, good question. I really like. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I really like the cut fruit because I don't know. I think it's very interesting. So, um, yeah, I'm re I really like the cut models, especially like the kiwi. Kiwi is really nice, really juicy. Where is it? There we go. Yeah. I also bought it at Ika and ate it. It's very good. Yes. 
is there anything you want to use for photogrammetry that you're not going to buy a 3D model for? Uh, yes, I have one here. Uh, wait, so I did this cookie. Yeah. This one is the most high res uh, Ica <laughs> cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Wow. So, yeah, uh, actually, he also made cookies, but they're not part of the fruit spec for obvious <laughs> reasons. <laughs> um, also, the cookie also comes in the top and bottom flavor. <laughs> this is the bottom of the... Oh, no, actually, I didn't do the bottom of the cookie. This was another test if it was, uh, yeah, if it was textured. But, yes, I also have photos of the cookie from the bottom. It's melting under the lights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it actually didn't melt that much, but yeah. So the scene that you made this for, is it like they can manipulate the objects with 3D lighting and everything? Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you've been here last time. For example, uh, here you can, here's the sun. And you can just, you can just grab the sun and make a sunset scene for some uh, romantic time with your apples. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, too specular. I think this banana, it's like, uh, sorry, this apple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, some textures, some textures need to be added so that uh, yeah, it looks a little bit more realistic. It's also not using my shaders, it's using just the default 3JS physical uh, material. Why are all the other Physic objects that stand around so cold today. Mm. Because I haven't touched them. Ah, okay. Or or I can also f fling the apple into them and then they will especially this one. This one is yeah. <laughs> this one has a life of its own. <laughs> uh, but yeah, e even this apple, I think I need to add in some angular damping because if you are a little bit too sometimes it just goes crazy and <laughs> <laughs> Gains energy instead of <laughs> Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Why didn't you spend the, the banana in the ear with a wire or something when you were taking the photo? At first, I started with this version actually, which was uh, I put it on three nails because I felt like maybe, and here is also for apples, I felt like maybe I could then take photos of the bottom up as well because. Photogrammetry takes into account all of the background as well. You actually need to have a stable, either stable background or no background at all. So in the photos that I, I, that I finally used, which you can see here, um, there basically isn't any background because I went so super close in uh, that I could, you know, just take the whiteness and, or, or the light, which was also, also overexposed anyway. If I have, if I would have taken the uh, suspended one, then I would have to have basically a gr like I would have to use the green screen for it, which at that time I didn't uh, kind of I guess think of, uh, and I and for especially for like other fruits that doesn't have, yeah, it might like at some points it might uh, not have enough kind of key points on the fruits to figure it out. Although actually I kind of. After I, like the nails method actually didn't work that well because I don't know, I guess because the bottom part was also there. So when I started putting fruit on the thing itself, it actually started working better. Um, and, and even things that I felt are gonna be horrible, like this uh, mandarin or orange, because they're specular reflections and basically you get points of light that are, don't actually correspond, that, that move around and you cannot triangulate based on them. But it actually turned out that uh, even these ones, you can actually create a pretty decent thing. Um, so yeah, I think in the end I could actually just uh, use a green screen uh, and it might actually work. All right, thank you very much.